What's up fellow bookworms and welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Dylan and in this video we are going to be taking a look at all four of the current gen Kindle devices and we are going to be ranking them from my least favorite to my most favorite. And along the way, we'll talk about some pros and cons of each of these devices. I do have individual reviews for each of these Kindle devices. So if there's one in particular you want to know a little bit more about, I highly recommend you check those out. I'm going to have all those videos linked in the description below. So this is going to be more of kind of an overview, kind of a short pros and cons for each device type video. Now that said, I'm going to show you the Kindles in order of cheapest to most expensive expensive and then at the very end we'll rank them but my thoughts will probably be clear by the time we get to the end of the video. So let's start with the Kindle Basic, which comes in normally priced at $99. Let's just call it what it is, 100 bucks for this thing. You can get this device and all the other Kindle devices on sale on Prime Day, on Black Friday, and then sometimes just on random days throughout the year. Usually this device, if you get it on sale, can be as low as about $80 maybe even as low as $60. It really just depends on the sale and the time of year. But I do think that this Kindle is where you're going to get the best value if you are new to Kindle entirely. And that's because, like I said, this is the cheapest device without a doubt. And if you're kind of on the fence about an e-reader and you maybe don't want to dive right into something like the Oasis, this is not a bad place at all to start because you've got a lot less risk. Now, I will say that you get what you pay for in some ways when it comes to the Kindle Basic. The software on this is exactly the same as the software on every other Kindle, except for the Scribe, but we'll talk about how the Scribe is a little bit different when we get to it. But otherwise, everything on this is going to be the same. The homepage looks the same. The layout of the books looks the same. The way that it functions works the same. It's the same device in a more compact form. But where kind of the the cheapness comes into play, and that is probably a little too harsh, but where this thing really shows its price is with the material that it's made out of, which for me is a little bit of a con. It's not a huge deal though, but it just kind of feels like cheap plastic. Of all the Kindle devices that I own, this one definitely feels the most toyish, not only because it's the smallest, but because it just feels, I don't know, it's hard to describe, but it just feels like a cheap plastic. Another thing that I want to point out though in the pros category that's great about the Kindle Basic is that it comes in this blue color, this I think denim blue it's called, and I like it because while other Kindles come in different colors as well, this is the only one where you get the color for the entirety of the device. So, for example, the paper white has a few color options now, but it's just the back. And then the front of the device is black. But this one you get blue all around, front and back, which I think is kind of nice because if I'm gonna buy a Kindle in a certain color, I kind of want the whole thing to be that color. So the biggest pro for the Kindle Basic is just going to be its price point. It's a fantastic way to try out a Kindle without taking too much of a risk. You can throw it in your backpack, you can throw it in your purse, you can even throw it in your pocket, it's so small, and take it on the go and not worry a whole lot about it. Don't get me wrong, 100 bucks is a lot of money to lose if you were to you know, break it or lose it while you're out and about, but compared to, again, something like the Oasis, I'd feel a lot better about losing this than I would about losing the Oasis. The biggest con though is for me, just its size. I, I think it's great for a portable device, but at home, I just, when I read on it, feel like, what am I doing? I have a bigger Kindle. I'm just going to use that one. The screen size is a little bit small. And then again, just kind of that plasticky, cheapy type feel is kind of a con for me. Next up, we have the Kindle Paperwhite, which is probably the most popular of all the Kindle devices. Full price, this thing's gonna be about $140, but again, depending on when you buy it, you're probably going to be able to find it on a decent sale several times a year, and maybe even get it for as cheap as about $90, maybe about $100, just depending. Like we've said, the software across all the Kindles, except for the Scribe, are identical, so we don't have to say anything about performance, really. Any pro or con, is going to be true across the board, so we'll leave that for other videos. But as far as appearance goes, I like the Paperwhite because it's got a slightly bigger screen size. The screen size on this one is 6.8 inches, I believe, or 6.7, uh, whereas the Kindle Basic, I think, is 6 inches. So compared side by side, this is going to be a very unscientific comparison, but side by side, uh, you can really see the difference in size. And I don't know, it just feels a lot sturdier to me. It just feels a lot more 
comfortable to use, to read on. So I do really like the increase in screen size on the paper white. As far as materials go, it's still plastic, but it just feels a little bit nicer as far as plastic goes. It's kind of a nice matte color, whereas the other one was just your standard plastic, I guess. I don't know if there's a name for it, but just regular old plastic. And this one is regular old plastic, but with a nice kind of matte finish. The big con though with the finish is that fingerprints and scratches and pretty much any blemish on the back is really going to show up. So I use a case on this most of the time. I took it off for this video, but just know that if you have oily hands or if you maybe even put lotion on your hands and then, you know, hold your Kindle too much, uh, it's gonna show up and it's gonna look kind of gross, but it's relatively easy to clean, so it's not a huge deal. Another thing to note, especially comparing the basic to the paper white here, is that the bezels on the front are completely flush on the paper white, whereas on the Kindle, they're kind of pronounced a little bit. So the way I like to think about it is like the basic is kind of like an old analog type TV. I don't know if it's called an analog TV, but it's one of those old style TVs where it's got the big edges that kind of poke out, you know, on the sides. Whereas this is kind of like the flat screen TV where nothing pokes out. You've just got this very slight rim around the edge of the device, but that's really it. So the biggest pro for the Paperwhite for me is going to be that it's still a very portable device like the Kindle Basic, but it's just a little meatier, if that makes sense. It's just got a little more oomph to it. It's just a little more comfortable to use while still being pretty affordable. It's 40 more dollars than the basic, but in the grand scheme of things, $40 is not a ton more to spend to get I think a device that's a little more comfortable to use. The biggest con though is actually not exclusive to the Paperwhite. The basic has the same problem, but it's going to be the placement of the power button. So I'm right-handed. I hold this thing like this 99.9% .9 of the time. And the problem with that is that my pinky rests perfectly on the power button right there on the bottom. And I can't tell you how many times I've been reading and I'll just move my hand slightly or I don't know, twitch my pinky or something and the device will turn off. It's not a huge deal. It takes about five seconds at most to turn off and then turn back on and I can resume reading. But when that happens several times during a reading session, it can be quite annoying. Now a case helps out a lot depending on what type of case you get. So if you do pick up a Paperwhite, I would highly recommend getting a case, specifically one that kind of like bumps out over the power button or just provides some kind of buffer to make sure that you're not constantly turning the thing off when you want it to be on. And that would be my advice also if you pick up the basic probably get a case that's going to help with that problem. Now moving up in price quite a bit, we have the Kindle Oasis, which comes in at $250, so about a $100 increase, which is quite a lot, I think. You'll notice the device looks quite different than both the basic and the paper white Kindles. Um, that's because, well, one, my wife's got this hot pink skin on there. This is not how it normally comes. Uh, normally it's going to be like gray on the back and then black on the front. Maybe I'll put a image on the screen so you can see what it normally looks like. But it's also more of a square shape, whereas the paper white and basic are more rectangular. The screen on this is seven inches, whereas the paper white is 6.8 inches. And that doesn't sound like a huge increase. And to be honest, you really can't notice it a ton, but the screen is a little bit bigger. But I think the biggest difference between the paper white and the Oasis is going to be these little buttons right here. These are page forward buttons and page back buttons. They do exactly what you think they would do. It'll turn your page forward, or if you wanna go back, it'll turn your page back. And then there's also this little ergonomic bump on the back. You can see that the hand just fits kind of perfectly right there, and you just press your buttons and enjoy your life while you sit back and read a good book. I like the buttons a lot. I like the ergonomic grip a lot. What I don't like, though, is the $110 price difference. Buttons are great, but I don't think they're worth $110. Again, though, that's my impression just purely from a value standpoint. If money is no object, I would say go for the buttons. Go for the ergonomic grip because it is nice. But I think the biggest con with the Oasis is that it hasn't been updated in, I guess, six and a half years? 
going on maybe seven years. Uh, this thing hasn't been touched since I think 2017, which makes it the oldest current gen Kindle by far. Uh, all the other Kindles have been revamped in the last year or so. So this one is starting to show its age for sure. The battery life on this thing is absolutely awful compared to the other Kindle devices. By normal, you know, electronic device standards, it's great. It lasts for at least a few weeks, but the Paperwhite and the Basic will last a few months if you don't use it 24 hours a day. So it is quite worse <laughs> as far as battery goes. And then another thing that's just kind of inconvenient, I wouldn't necessarily let it keep me from buying the Oasis if I really wanted it, but it is the way that it's charged. So this thing is still using a micro USB cable, whereas every other Kindle device and basically every other electronic device, except for Apple products, are using USB-C. So it's just kind of annoying sometimes when I need to charge this thing, like I've got to turn my whole office upside down looking for that one specific cable that's about four inches long and is the easiest thing to lose in the whole universe. When I've got 15 USB-C cables sitting around that I wish I could use, but just can't. So to wrap it up, my thoughts on the Oasis are, I think it's a little overpriced, it's definitely old and it's beginning to show its age, but on the pro side, I like the buttons. I like the ergonomic grip. It's by far, I would say, the most comfortable in the hand device to use, but for the money, I'm just not so sure about the Oasis anymore. And now we've got one final Kindle to talk about, and that is the brand new Kindle Scribe. You'll see this thing looks quite different than the other Kindles, and it's also priced quite differently. Uh, the very cheapest version of this thing you can get is $340, I believe. I'll put it on screen if it's different, which is a lot of money to spend to read some books. Now, obviously, this thing is called the Scribe. Its primary purpose is to take notes and to be kind of a productivity tool. And full disclosure here, that is not at all how I've used this device. If you're familiar with the channel, you know that I talk about books and I like to read mostly fiction. So I don't take a lot of notes and therefore I don't really need a Kindle Scribe. It's nice to have, but I don't really use it for what it was designed to be used for. But with that in mind, I will definitely share my thoughts uh, concerning how I have used this device and you know what I think of it, using it as purely a reader. And I will say that, without a doubt, the most obvious thing here is the screen size, and that's the biggest pro for sure. This thing has a 10 point something inch screen, I don't remember, I should have looked that up. 10 point something inch, inch screen, which is absolutely massive. It's basically the size of an iPad, which is, great for reading, um, but the biggest cons here are the price. It's absolutely insane to spend $340 on a screen, <laughs> basically. Uh, I could buy a lot of books for $340. It is not economical at all. Uh, I would not have bought this if it weren't for videos I was going to make about it, but I have it, and so I do find myself using it a lot because the screen is just so great, but at the same time, that's kind of a double-edged sword because yes, it's super easy to read on this thing. I love that I can almost mimic like reading a real book in that I turn the page every few minutes rather than say on the basic, I'm turning the page every 30 seconds because there's like 20 words on the screen at a time. This thing, I've turned the page four times and I've read a chapter. It's great, but it can be kind of annoying to hold for extended periods of time. It's not a heavy device. I think it comes in around like 12 or something ounces. Again, I have a whole video dedicated to this thing with the very accurate specs. <laughs> so you can check that out if you're interested. But it's roughly about a pound, probably a little less than a pound, which is not a lot of weight. But if you're holding it for three hours, it adds up. Your arms start to get a little stiff. Your pinky, if you rest it on your pinky, will start to hurt after about 20 minutes, maybe even a little less than that. So this thing is great if you like to read at your desk, but I don't do that a lot. And so this is great for like little reading sprints, but I wouldn't do a lot of marathon reading on the Kindle Scribe. If you do like taking notes when you read though, this is a device like no other, and I would highly recommend it if money is no object, and if you, I mean, really, really like taking notes enough to spend over $300 to do it. Uh, I would definitely check this device out, but from a purely reading standpoint, it's way too expensive in my opinion. So how do I rank these devices from worst to best? And I have to say, it's kind of hard because there's a lot that goes into it. 
Uh, I don't only have to think about the functionality of the device and the ease of use and how much I enjoy using it, but a big thing for me, if you couldn't tell already, is value. So do I wanna spend $340 on a scribe that allows me to do essentially the same thing as a $100 Kindle Basic allows me to do? Uh, if I took notes again, the scribe might be a little different, but for me, I'm just reading books on both of these devices. And so three and a half times more <laughs> versus you know $100, it's hard to rank that because I love using the scribe a lot more, but it's way too much money. So I'm just gonna rank these kind of, I don't know, I don't even know what the criteria is here. Ease of use, enjoyability, and then also value is going to play a role in this. So if money is no object to you, then your ranking might be a little different. So having said all that, let's just do it. Uh, in fourth place is going to have to be the Kindle Scribe. And I absolutely love using this thing. It's the Kindle that I probably use most often than not, but that's only because I already have it. <laughs> if I didn't already buy this thing, I would not, I wouldn't do it again. I bought it so I could talk about it here on the channel and it seemed really cool, but I wouldn't buy this thing again. It was a waste of money, for sure. It's a screen with words on it for over $300. So fourth place is the Scribe. Uh, if money was no object, it would be ranked higher, but money is definitely an object, at least for me. In third place is going to be the Kindle Oasis for kind of the same reason. $250 is a lot easier to swallow than $350, but still, it is quite expensive for a six and a half year old device that more or less does the same thing as all the other devices, but just has buttons. So it's a great device, but it is old. It's showing its age and it's way too expensive for what it currently is. Now, if a new generation of Oasis comes out today or tomorrow at the same price point, it would probably be ranked number one. But as it stands, the Kindle Oasis is number three. And then number two, and this is hard, but I'm gonna have to say the Kindle Basic gets second place on the list. It's a great device, but it's just a little too small for me. It's just a little too cheapy feeling to me. And for 40 more dollars, I can go ahead and get the Paperwhite, which has basically everything good that the Basic has, but has just a little bit extra that I think is well worth the $40 price difference. I love this device. It's by far my favorite Kindle. It's been my favorite Kindle since I've gotten it. It's where I think you're gonna find the best value without sacrificing any really of the features of the other devices. The Oasis has a couple extra features that this one doesn't. The Scribe obviously has some stuff this one doesn't. But just for reading books, this is the best way to do it, in my opinion. But let me know in the comments below what your favorite Kindle is. I would absolutely love to hear from you guys. And also tell me why. Tell me why you agree with this list or maybe why you would have ranked the Kindles differently. I would absolutely love to hear it. And don't forget, if you haven't already, check out my Discord server. The link for that's gonna be in the description below. We talk about all things books over there. We talk about all things Kindle over there. It's a small server, but it's continuing to grow. And hey, I think you would make a great addition over on the Discord server. So make sure you check out the link for that in the description below. And if you wanna to continue to support what I do here on the channel, there's a link for my Patreon in the description below as well. And your support really does mean the world. But that's it for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you in the next video.